I get so many questions each and every day asking how do I balance it all and while I like to film videos talking about each little piece and tip and trick of how I balance it all, I think it would be helpful to just sit down film a whole video on how I balance work as a daycare provider and home life as a mom, wife, friend, and all of those other things. How do I fit in all those pieces? Because I also have YouTube on top of that, so I've gotten really, really good at maximizing my time. And so I thought I would sit down and just share with you guys all the tips I have in general. I have lots of other little tips that I can share in other videos, but I just really wanted to sit down and share the whole picture of how I do it all. If you're new to our channel, hi, my name is Sarah. This is our channel, Work Life Glue, where we talk about balancing work and life and everything in between. So we do videos about organizing, decluttering, parenting, daycare because I'm a daycare provider, productivity, and just little tips and tricks along the way. So if you like those kinds of videos, please make sure you subscribe and we would love to have you as part of our glue stick family. So before I jump in, I just wanna say this video is gonna be a lot of talking, but I want you guys to come away with something. If it's not an actual tip that you took, maybe you're doing a lot of these things, maybe it's just reassurance that you're doing the right thing and that it's not always gonna feel like you're doing a perfect balance of everything. It never will feel like that. If you have a lot of balls in the air that you're juggling, it's never gonna feel like perfectly balanced. It doesn't feel that way for me, but maybe you can just gain some reassurance that you're doing okay, you're doing a good job, and that sometimes some seasons are just harder than others. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. So my very first piece of advice is just to recognize that you will never be able to do it all. I have a ton of different things in the air at any given time, and I never feel like I have anything going my way. I mean, some things are going better than others, but I don't ever have it perfectly figured out. And you won't either. And that's okay. That's part of hum being human. That's part of figuring things out. That's part of life. And I would say, especially if you're a new daycare provider, it's going to feel like a lot at first. It's going to feel overwhelming. It still feels overwhelming at times, especially during transition times when more kids come in. Um, during the Christmas season, you know, when you just have a lot going on in general, it's gonna feel like a lot. So find other places that you can cut back and just know that it's okay to not be able to do it all. Piggybacking off of that, try to figure out what are your priorities and make those things happen. It is so easy when we work from home to see a bazillion things that need to get done and to feel like they are all priorities because they're all just staring at you in the face. Maybe the paint needs to be repainted. Maybe there's a closet that you go into every day and it needs to be organized. When you go into your kid's closet, you notice you know their clothes need to be updated. They're growing out of them. You look at your daycare space and you think, oh, this could be a lot cuter. This could be more organized. There are so many things that we could be doing with our time, but you really need to sit down and figure out what are your priorities. So when you really sit down to think about it, think about what are your priorities in life. And I'm just gonna go through mine and you might be surprised on where certain things fall on the list. My very first priority is time with my family. My family is everything to me. My kids are little, they need me. My husband is gone a lot. So when we have time as a family, that comes first. Second is my self-care. I try to work this into my day so that it doesn't get neglected, but it's really important, especially as caregivers, that we fill ourselves up so that we can give back to others. Third, my health. I am really working on that and building that into my day as well and making it a priority. And then things like my kids' appointments, my appointments, and special events with my family. Notice I haven't mentioned my job at all yet or my YouTube or anything of that nature. It's all been focused on my family and myself. After that, I prioritize vacations and time off. I really make sure those are in line so that I have some breathing room in my schedule. I have time to plan these appointments and special events and just have days blocked off where nothing is planned. And then after that, I prioritize daycare must do's. Now this isn't to say that I'm not ever working on my job. I do my job 50 hours a week, but when I think of my free time, I'm trying really hard not to devote that to daycare because it is not my main priority when it comes to my whole life. My family is, and that's how it should be. That's how it is for your daycare families. They prioritize their family. Obviously they have to go to their job, but their family comes first and that's how it should be. And then after that, I prioritize our home, our house, you know, keeping things in order, keeping things clean. 
and then after that is everything else. So this isn't to say that I don't spend my day working on these things, working on cleaning my house and stuff like that, but when push comes to shove and life gets really busy, those are the things I neglect first because they aren't as important as the time with my family. My house can always be cleaned more, always, but my kids can't get the time back that we have already spent together. Once they're five, I can't go back to when they were two and get that time back. So I really prioritize that and I think you guys should too. Okay, Sarah, so there's still a bazillion things I need to do. I may be trying to prioritize my family, but I'm feeling really overwhelmed in these other areas. What can I do? Well, you can get up early or you can stay up late. I know that's probably not what you guys want to hear, but I just feel like there are only so many hours in a day and when you work as many hours as we do it's hard to squeeze those extra hours out for things like cleaning organizing paperwork passion projects side businesses things like that is really hard to carve that time out and so i recommend not using up your family time on that use the time when your family is sleeping to do that. So for me, that is getting up early. For you, it might be staying up late. It just really depends on what works best for you. I get up at 4 a.m. From four to five, I work on YouTube because it's something I love. It's a business of mine. It's my passion. It allows me to help others in so much of a bigger way than I could any other way using an hour of my day on it. But for you, it might be cleaning, it might be exercising, self-care, laundry, prepping dinners, paperwork, like whatever it may be, an extra hour in your day could really go so far. And then from five to six, I spend that time on my self-care. I do my miracle morning. I'm doing affirmations. I'm praying. I'm reading those books that enrich me and help me progress as a person. And all of this happens during the hours when nobody else needs me. And I can't do those things when I have two little ones or 10 needing me plus a husband. So if you really sit and think about your day, when could you carve out 20 minutes? 40 minutes, an hour, in the beginning of the day or in the end, how could you make that work? What could you sacrifice to make that work? If you're feeling really overwhelmed, it may be something you consider doing. Maybe not forever, but just for a season. And it may give you the sanity and relief that you need and may be worth that extra hour of sleep that you are losing or an hour less of Netflix a day. The only other time of day that we daycare providers have that's uninterrupted usually, hopefully, is nap time. Now I know some providers still have kids awake. I do too. They're not always asleep, but for me personally, they're always laying down, occupied in some way, reading, doing puzzles, that kind of thing if they are you know, transitioning out of nap. And this time is sacred, not only for them to get the rest they need because we play hard, but also for me to get the rest I need, to get the quiet I need, and to get things done that I can't get done during the daycare day. Even if I didn't have a side business, even if I didn't have anything extra in my life, even if I didn't have kids, daycare still comes with so many responsibilities. If you're watching this, I have a feeling you already know what they are, but the list just goes on and on. So nap time is a great time to focus on these priorities and these extra things that come along with daycare that we don't have time to do during the time the kids are awake. So this could be a great time to do Bible study and other self-care type of things, reading, exercising, meditating, painting your nails, doing a face mask, you know, those things are important. And you know, it may not take the whole nap time, but they are nice to build in so that you're giving back to yourself so that you can keep giving the rest of the day to the daycare kids. And that isn't selfish, that isn't a waste of the parents' money. You need to take care of you so you can do a really good job taking care of those kids. It's also a great time to make calls, make appointments, schedule things, sign up your kids for classes. I also like to fit in trainings during my nap time from time to time. So if I don't have a lot of time to go to a training, I will do them online which is awesome and I could just do them right from my computer while the kids are sleeping. I sometimes use nap time to plan activities, to order things for daycare, to you know, plan what Christmas gifts I'm going to get them and do some budgeting for daycare. I make our daycare newsletters and calendars during nap time. So please utilize nap time. I would highly recommend you don't spend the whole time watching TV every day. I mean, at once in a while, it's good to just veg out and have some relief especially if it's a really stressful time in your life and you just need that but i would highly encourage you to maximize that time 
build in some time for yourself, but do things that actually fill you up so you're not just doing something mindless. Now, I know a lot of people think about nap time during daycare as like this negative thing. They get a two hour break, yada, yada, yada. We all know that's not true. It is not a break. It's a break from kids needing you fully because you still have to be available to them. And sometimes it just doesn't happen where you get a break but we also have so many extra things we have to do as a provider that we can't do when the kids are up, nor would parents want us doing those things. They don't want us sitting on the computer paying our bills and paying our quarterly taxes while the kids are playing. They want us engaged with them, and so something has to give, and I'm all for being the spokesperson for that because parents don't always realize what goes into our jobs, what goes into licensing, the business side of it, interviewing. I mean, there's so many different parts and we could spend every waking moment on daycare if we aren't careful. And so it's really important to try to do those things when the kids are asleep or resting. Okay, so we've talked about times when kids are asleep or occupied, but what could we build into our day otherwise? I am all for building in routines. That is how I really maximize my time it's how I get so much done is by having routines because the more you can make something a routine, the less you have to think about it, the less brain power it takes, and the less stress it puts on you. So I build in all kinds of routines into my day. One thing I do regularly is vacuum during the day. I don't vacuum the whole house or anything like that when the daycare kids are here, but after a really messy project with like glitter, which is pretty much a lot in my house, or sand, or rice or whatever, Play-Doh, I vacuum because it is so easy for that to get tracked all over my house. I cook meals during daycare. I cook breakfast while the kids are coloring. I cook lunch while they're watching a TV show or doing table activities. And then I will get snack ready really quick at the end of the nap or sometimes while they're just sitting there waiting because it's very quick to do. But I think it's really good for kids to see that food takes preparation and takes time. I build in doing dishes during the day. I clean the kitchen after lunch, run the dishwasher, clean off the surfaces of the counters and the table, and then I do a quick sweep back of the floors. And this is something I build in. The kids are doing a dance party while I'm doing this. Sometimes I will fold laundry during daycare hours, and I sometimes do it when the kids are awake, sometimes not. But if they're awake, I do it when they're occupied with an activity, puzzles, sensory bins, Play-Doh, that kind of thing. When they're really engaged in something, I'll just sit on the floor next to them and fold laundry. And often this becomes an educational activity for them naming whose shirt they think it is or what color it is or what shape or character is on it. It's just a really fun way and I think it's so important for kids to see as a home away from home that a home requires work, a home requires maintenance. And because they're in a home, they're gonna see those things and I think it's so realistic and good for kids to see these things happening. I sometimes do light tidying and organizing during the day so I might rearrange the daycare books while the kids are playing or organize a cabinet in the daycare space or just tidy up. Um, I think it's good for kids to see that we have to work to keep things tidy. When we are outside sometimes, I will go pull weeds, I'll deadhead flowers, I will sweep the patio, things like that. I think it's okay to do those things during daycare. It's okay to maintain your home because your home is your business. It needs to stay nice for the kids. And then I also get curriculum ready on Thursdays during the school year while the kids are doing an open-ended activity at the table. I will pull out all my curriculum stuff and separate it out for each day so that the next week is all planned. That way I don't have to do this during family time or take up nap time. I just do it while the kids are playing. So there are so many ways you can build in a lot of the stuff you have to do that you don't really want to do into the daycare day. It's not taking away from the kids. It's actually good for them to see and it doesn't take a whole lot of time when it becomes a routine. Another thing I would recommend you do is to take days off to get things done. Now, don't turn every vacation day or holiday into a work day, but I think it's really healthy and good to set aside some time to plan appointments, to get record keeping done, go to your tax appointment, stuff like that. I think it's really good to build that in on days off because they are hard to fit in during the day or to try to squeeze in after daycare, before daycare, something like that. Something I started this year is planning four unpaid days off solely to work on record keeping because I got really behind on that last year. It was just a huge struggle for me with everything going on in my life. And so I decided 
that this year I would take those four unpaid days and I knew I would actually work because they're unpaid and I don't like not getting paid. And so my mom comes over, she watches my girls and I spend that time entering receipts, totaling them, putting in my mileage, figuring out the hours I worked for a month and stuff like that so that come next year at tax time, I have very little work to do and it's a huge burden off my back. Something else you can do is hire a sub or find someone to fill in for you. So maybe you have special events for your kids that you've been missing out on or you've been way behind on dentist appointments or haircuts or something like that and it's hard to plan on your days off because you still have your children with you. Um, it's another hard thing about daycare. We don't have a daycare to send our own kids to when we are off, nor do we really want to, but you know, it can be really helpful to hire somebody or have a family member or friend step in for a couple of hours so you can go to your kid's kindergarten graduation or concert or volunteer in their classroom or go to those dentist appointments, doctor appointments, stuff like that. Here where I live, we have some providers who have stop doing their in-home daycare but they've kept all of the licensing requirements with trainings and stuff and so they can come into other people's homes and sub in for them and we just pay them so that's a really great option but you might be able to depending on your licensing rules or if you even have to be licensed you could ask a family member a friend a neighbor a teenager you know think obviously be smart about it, but it can be really helpful to just have somebody to step in for a couple hours. You don't have to close and inconvenience the parents, but you can go do those things that you need to do that other people are able to do a little easier because they have childcare for their kids and their work doesn't require a backup plan if they are gone. Something else you could consider doing is hiring an assistant. I personally haven't hired an assistant, but I know some people who have, and this can be really helpful. Just like having a sub, it can be really helpful to have somebody come in while you're still there. Perhaps you have a lot of little kids, but you want to teach preschool. They could watch the infants and toddlers while you have preschool time. They could play with the kids while you prep meals or do the record keeping and stuff like that. They could watch the kids while you organize or clean. Maybe you hire an assistant instead of hiring a cleaning service. And so you just clean your home while the assistant is there. There's so many things you can do that's probably worth the money. Another thing I think is important if you have a partner or spouse is to have a real conversation with them about expectations. I think as providers, we give, 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 and as moms, and it's so easy because we're home to just take on pretty much every task that happens at home, but we have to remember that we actually are working and we have a business and it's a ton of extra work that is different than being a stay-at-home mom. I'm not saying being a stay-at-home mom is easy, but having a daycare business is way different than being a stay-at-home mom. It is a business. There are people who require things of you. You're open certain hours. You have to maintain a level of cleanliness that you may not have to if you're a stay-at-home mom. And your house gets dirtier more easily because you have more kids there. It's just on and on and on. It's a lot of work. And so I think it's really, really important to have clear expectations with your spouse and your family, especially if you have older children or teenagers to know what the duties and expectations are of each person so that you aren't carrying more load than you can actually handle. And if you are carrying more load than you can handle, I have a couple ideas for you as well. First of all, use your village. Maybe your spouse can't help because they work a ton or they have a crazy schedule. That's very similar to my situation. My husband does help as much as he can, but he works a very crazy schedule. So it's hard to ever know when he's gonna be home to help. And so I personally use my village. I have babysitters that will come in and help. I use my parents a lot and I'm so grateful for them. They will take the girls overnight once a month so I can really get a bunch done on a Saturday without my kids needing me because I have two really little kids and they need me a lot. And they also can take them for trainings or something like that if my husband can't be there. And it just is such a huge burden off my back to have that help and support. And if you don't have a village around you, maybe you're in a new area, maybe you don't have friends or family around you, hire babysitters join a church, join some kind of organization where you can make friends and get those people. And it doesn't have to be all one-sided. I have traded date nights with friends where they watch our kids so we can go on a date and then we switch and watch their kids so they can go on a date. Maybe you do it with another mom and she watches your kids while you organize your kitchen and then you trade. You know, think outside the box. Your village 
can be bigger than what you really think it is and it's so important and i really truly believe it does take a village and then lastly hire things out you know we don't all have unlimited funds but i truly believe time is more valuable than money and so my time with my family on the weekends at night is more valuable than the money i might have to spend on somebody helping me out so we hire a cleaning service to come in every other week to help do a basic clean of our house so i just try to maintain it and do some of the more detailed stuff but every other week our house is basically clean and it's so helpful to me and it saves me three hours. That's an hour and a half every week or three hours every other week that I don't have to do on a Saturday. I can go out and go make memories with my kids or run errands or what have you. You can also hire out meal planning or meal prepping or do something like five, five dinners one hour that I've been a huge advocate for for over a year. I just love them. It's a website, you know, it, delegating doesn't have to just be a person coming into your home it could be using a service or online service to help you out you could get help with lawn care landscaping snow removal handyman services so you don't have to be spending your time off fixing things around your house if you need help on your house you could hire a contractor you could hire an organizer to come help you out if organizing isn't your strong suit and in this day and age of two parent working families being very common there are so many different things you can hire out that i haven't even thought of so just consider that if you're feeling overwhelmed and you don't have a lot of people to help you find ways to hire people to help you so you have more time. Those are my tips guys. They're nothing completely new that you've never thought of, but I hope you thought of them in a new way or looked at it in a whole different perspective thinking about all these different things. I would love to know if you have any additional tips. So if you go over to our community tab and click on the thumbnail for this video, you can comment there since YouTube has disabled our comments. As always, I hope this video helped you guys. That's what these videos are for. I just want to help people. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye guys.